Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this from Patriot. It's their P300. It's an M.2 NVMe SSD. It's got read speeds of up to 1,700 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 1,200. Okay, as you can see, we've got the Patriot P300 M.2 PCIe Gen 3 Times 4 Solid State Drive. It's NVMe based, I can tell from the cutout there, uh, and for the speeds, what they're quoting. It says 512 gigabytes. Speed results based on one terabyte SSD. So if you've got anything lower than one terabyte, the speed might be potentially slower. Uh, interesting enough, it doesn't actually say what the speed is on the front. It does say it's high performance which means basically nothing to me because they say SSDs are high performance, they say NVMEs are high performance. Um, it says exactly the same thing on the box, which I've already opened, uh, for a two and a half inch one. So does that mean high performance compared to something or does it mean it's high, uh, high performance or, or what? Um, who knows what that actually is supposed to mean. Um, so what is a slow one? Do they do a slow one? Who knows? Uh, you can actually see the SSD here, again it says Patriot on it, it's got your model number, it's got the size and so forth, so it's pretty straightforward. On the back you've got all your different uh, languages, I have checked the website, they do mention on the website, or at least there is specifications for it to download for a 128GB model, a 256GB, a 512 which is this that's this one, a 1TB and a 2TB version as well. Um, it does say on the back it's got a 3 year warranty, all this is all your different languages and you've got different ways of contacting them and liking them on Facebook and all this, that and the other. So that's pretty much it for the pack. So this is what you've got inside the pack, there's no discs, there's no paperwork, there's nothing else. On the website there's no mention of any um, software you can use with it, like to mon monitor it or anything like that. So basically what you see is what you get. Um, and as we said already, it tells you the size on there, tells you it's PCI. PCIe Gen 3 x4 M.2 SSD, uh, 2280, that's obviously the measurement size, uh, warranty void is label removed, which I hate it when they do that because if you want to add an aftermarket uh, heatsink on there, they recommend you take labels off, or at least I do, to get the best cooling. They should stick this on the bottom uh, there where it's not going to come in the way. So. Please, uh, Patriot, can you move the sticker, stick it on the back, or get rid of that warranty if the label's removed? Because in all honesty, what's the label going to do? Nothing. Um, it's just going to interfere if you're putting a heat sink on it. So on the back, it's pretty much it. It's black. Um, there's pretty much no else to, to really see, and you can see all the pins on the end. But that's what it looks like. Okay, so we've got the NVMe SSD connected up to the PC. I've just started the machine up. I'm just going to go to disk management and enable the disk. So you can see it's brand new disk, new simple volume. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll keep it as the default. There we go. And for we'll load up hardware info as well so we can see the temperatures we're looking at. Okay, let's find it on the list. So let's CPU, CPU, Gigabyte, Seagate Fire CUDA. Here we go. So here's the P300, 512 gigabytes. It's currently running at 43 degrees Celsius on average. So it's not too warm or anything like that. It's about normal, in all honesty, for an SSD running at idle. What we're going to do now is run Crystal Disk Mark. Choose the correct drive, so it's drive D and all. And we're going to see what the read and write speeds actually are on this drive, if it's correct on the website, or, well, if it's not correct, and if there's a reason why they didn't include it on the box. Okay, so the read speed is running at 2,132 megabytes per second. 
Obviously that's going to average out in a few moments, but uh, that is actually pretty good. Um, especially considering they only quote 1800 on their paperwork. So you're actually getting a lot faster speed than they actually say. Okay, so we're going to get the right speed pop up in a few seconds, but one thing to note is the temperatures. Currently the average temperature is running at 55 degrees Celsius. The maximum, as in the highest it went up to, was 71 degrees Celsius at the moment. So it's getting quite warm when it's fully under load, but again, that's when it's fully under load. If it's probably under load for a longer time, it'll probably get even hotter. Uh, it might be an advantage adding a heat sink on there, but bear in mind, if you do have that heat sink, it's going to cause issues with your warranty because you'll probably want to take that sticker off. But here we go, the right speed has now popped up. It's nearly 1,600 megabytes per second. Considering they only quote 1,200, uh, it's doing pretty well in comparison. So why the quoting a lot less, I don't know. Maybe some of the, um, the drives are a bit slower than others and maybe we've got a lucky one. But at the moment, running these tests, we are getting, uh, as you can see, uh, nearly 1,600 megabytes per second. Okay, so Crystal Disk Mark is now finished. As you can see, the final results there. So 300, sorry, 2,135 megabytes per second and 1,598 for the right. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to zoom the camera in there just so you can probably see a little bit better, just in case. Um, and the temperatures again uh, went up to 74 degrees, averaged at 60. Now I'm going to run Atto now, which is another program for checking speeds. I'm going to change it to the new volume and then press start. It'll start off with slow speeds as it's doing small file sizes, but as the file sizes get bigger, you'll find the speed uh, will increase. At the moment, with really small files, it's going at 63 megabytes per second on read and roughly around about the same on the right. As soon as you jump up to the one kilobyte, you can see the numbers have near enough doubled. And the same again when it gets up to two kilobyte, it's near enough doubled. Again, running the right speed at 240 megabytes per second and the read at 180. Curiously, the right is actually going faster at this moment than the read. Um, and then when it jumps up again, again, it nearly doubles in speed yet again. Okay, so let's have a look at the sort of read and write speeds at the moment. So. In small file sizes, the read speed was actually slower than the write, but as soon as the file sizes got to roughly around about 32 to 64 kilobytes, then the read speed shot ahead. And the read speed is getting close to 2 gigabits per second, which is 2,000 megabytes per second. So it's a little bit off the... Um, it's a little bit off what we got on Crystal Disk Mark test results, but still a lot faster than the state. And again, the write speed is roughly running at roughly is running at roughly 1.5 gigabytes per second. That's again 1,500 megabytes per second. So it's running a lot faster than the 1,200 what they're quoting. So overall test speeds on this are running a lot faster than they quote or state. Temperature again is maximum it's got up to is 75, it's currently running at 71, 73 um, and the average throughout all the tests, yeah there was a little gap in the middle of the beginning but it's run at roughly about 61 degrees so for average usage it's going to average out around about I'm guessing 60 degrees and below. Okay, so in conclusion, you've actually got a very nice solid state drive, or should I say NVMe based one, uh, at a very good price, especially the 256 gigabyte version and the 512. The one terabyte version seems quite expensive, but that's possibly due to uh, supply at the moment. So bear in mind, prices may alter. This is a no frills attached solid state drive, so you don't get any RGB lighting or heat sinks or anything like that. But if you are interested in that, they do have a Patriot Viper, the VPN100, which has got a heat sink, as well as the Patriot Viper Gaming, which has got RGB lighting on it, and that's the VPR100. The drive is very similar price to a lot of others on the market, including offerings from Western Digital, XPG and Crucial. 
They all offer roughly the same sort of performance for roughly the same price. One thing they don't shout about much on this model is the power consumption. It's actually quite a low power consumption and the only time I actually see this mentioned is, believe it or not, on Amazon. Unless you really dig deep into their uh, information on their website. Uh, it uses roughly around about 2 watts of power in usage in comparison to something like a Western Digital Blue which runs at roughly around about 4 watts. In an average day PC, that isn't really going to add up to much, in all honesty, for a mid eng If you've got a lot of them around in the server or something, yeah, it could make a lot of dis difference over time. But then again, if you were having a server, would you put a mid end part in there, or would you actually be putting more higher end, faster parts in there? So overall, would I buy this drive? Yes, I would, if I can get it for the right price. Uh, so it's got to be roughly the same sort of price, or better price as others on the market. It does have the advantage that it doesn't come with a heat sink, so that means it'll be able to fit into a laptop and other devices. And it's actually running around about 15-16% faster than the manufacturer states that it does. The only real negative is the warranty sticker across the front. If you want to put a heat sink on there, like some motherboards have them built in, even some laptops have the heat sinks built in for the SSD drives these days. Um, Ideally, you need to remove that sticker so it makes proper contact with the SSD and the heatsink. Uh, unfortunately, if you remove the sticker, it voids your warranty.